And I want to tell you now a beautiful story that I heard from Rebbe Tzimrifki's father, Rebbe Levi Booker, who told me a story that I heard from his brother. It's a live bomber story. It's a live bomber story. And it's about children. And the story goes like this. So Alti Bukit, Rabbi, Rabbi Levi Bukit's younger brother, he was in the Kolo, studying in, in uh, New York that, this particular year. I'm not sure if it was 1982 or 83. And very often, whenever there was, the Rebbe wanted things to be done, the Kolo, the younger light from the Kolo, would be called upon. It would be tapped. So for example, the Rebbe used to give matzah personally for many years, and then afterwards, it became overwhelming, and our pace up was no time, the Rebbe would give matzah to the fellows at the Kolo, and the fellows at the Kolo would deliver to everybody. Uh, in 1985, when the Rebbe wanted to give out tanyas after the Fabrengi Yeralt Nissen, the fellows of the Kolo were appointed, they represented the Rebbe. So these young, newly married rabbis were doing their final training before they went on shlichus. There were people who Rebbe used to tap. Anyway, this, so by, in Hayom Yom, we'll talk about the Simer Tashem in our, in our virtual uh, lunch and learn that we have every day. We get to the Hayom Yom Vlad Bona before it, and we'll talk about the all, Tuesday night class, and we'll focus on this also. It says in Hayom Yom that there was a, it was an outstanding festival by the Mitla Rebbe. It says, but he didn't, he didn't wash her bread, but he said, L'chaim. And it says there were many miracles in this day, especially with regard to childless couples. That's, that's, the, that's what it says in Hayom Yom. So because of, it says this in Hayom Yom, I mean, the Rebbe was besieged by people asking for blessings really all the time. But especially in Lagba Omer, many, many people would come. Broken people, desperate people, from all over. And when the Rebbe would leave his house in the morning, on President Street, he would just would walk down, but his house was like a little bit elevated, an elevated hill, and there was a couple of steps, and then there was a walkway, another couple of steps. When the Rebbe would come down to go to his car, there would be many, many people. I don't know, dozens, tens, hundreds, I don't know how many people, many, many people. Many people, people begging for, for a blessing on this very holy and powerful day of Lag Bomer. And because of the overwhelming crowd and because of people who are distraught and emotional, the Rebbe's uh, secretaries were concerned that he wouldn't be able to make it into the car and that the people would push the Rebbe or jostle. You know, it was such an intensity. Everybody was well-meaning, but it was so intense that they were very concerned about this. So they, they tapped the Kolo. They asked a number of Kolo fellows if they could please be there in the morning they better to form like a human chain just to protect the Rebbe. The Rebbe should be able to get into the car. You know, the Rebbe would be there and he would answer who he wanted to answer as he was able, but, but just to protect the Rebbe. So Alti Bukit was one of these uh, you liked. He was there. Now the truth is he's not a very burly fellow. He probably should have taken somebody with more muscle, but anyway. He was there. He was doing his best to try to hold the crowd back and, and it was impossible. This particular live bomber was just overwhelming, impossible, people wailing and shrieking and crying and begging. It was, it was terrible. It's terrible. People asking for blessings, you know, like some people that have answered, some people that didn't, you know, the Rebbe did what he could for people. There was one fellow there who was, was definitely Haredi, but definitely not Chabad. Definitely not Chabad. And from the way he was dressed, Rabbi Alte Bukit was pretty sure this guy was a member of the Satmar sect, the Satmar Hasidim. Now, you know, today's day and age, is, things, are, things are very different, but I can tell you in the early 80s, there was a lot of negativity coming from the Satmar's community towards Chabad. There, a lot of very negative things, unfortunately. Unfortunately. You know, Chabad just promoted positivity and never to teach Hasidis, but the Satmar's were very upset. Many of their, their uh, intelligentsia was attracted to Hasidis and they were a different way of life. It was not it was not a good time. And the fact that somebody from Satmar would come for a blessing was like, it was remarkable, but it wasn't so surprising because the community said what the community said, but people who needed a bracha knew where to get a bracha. Anyway, the Satmar Yaman jumped over the car, jumped over the car, and he's literally on the car. Okay, the guy, you have to picture, the guy, the guy is on the car with his face <laughs> hanging down as the Rebbe gets into the car and he's banging on the window. And this guy's desperate. And when the window opens, and he, he yells out his name, his Hebrew name and his mother's name, you know, like Avram ben Sarah, and he yells out his wife's name, his wife, let's say, I don't know, you know, Rivka Basrochel, 
And he says a blessing, a blessing for, for a child. So the Rebbe said loud, Amen. The Rebbe said, Amen. And the Rebbe said to him, With who will the child play? He'll be alone. With who will the child play? And the man was stunned. <laughs> Hanging upside down on top of a car. He had stunned. The Rebbe said, With who will the child play? So the Rebbe said, He should have a brother. And the man was stunned. And Alti Book is standing right there and he screams at the guy, Say, Amen. So the guy shouts, Amen. And he scrambles off the car, and that's the end of the story. And whatever, the Rebbe's car drives off, and young Rabbi Alti Book goes his way, and that's, that's the end of the story. That's it. Does, never hears from the guy again, never sees Whatever, it's a story. It's a day in people's lives, you know. Uh, th something that happened. Exactly 13, 14 years later, exactly 14 years later, it's live home. And Rabbi Alta Bukit is a shliach in Lexington, Massachusetts. He decides he's going to drive down early in the morning to go to the Ohel. Go to the Ohel. Actually, it works out. This is the early 80s. This is now, uh, maybe it was 84, 84, 85. I don't know, so early 80s. And it's just after Gimel Thomas, the, I think the year after Gimel Thomas, he decides he's going to go to the Ohel. He has, he has an event back for, for back, back home where he is. going to go to the Ohel. He's at the Ohel early in the morning. And he notices a Satma Chassid there with two little Satma boys. Two Satma boys. And he, he davens over there. He sees them davening. And they go into the Ohel. And he sees these two boys reciting the Mimer, the Hasidic discourse that Lubavitcher Bar Mitzvah boys recite at their Bar Mitzvah. They're reciting the Mimer at the Ohel. And it's very intriguing to him because, you know, in the Satmar community, they don't believe, they don't really study Hasidus, and they're doing Chabad customs. The whole thing is very strange to him. And he goes over to the guy after, and, and he looks so familiar to him. He looks so familiar. Like, he looks like somebody he's seen once before. And uh, Rabbi Bukha says to him, you know, uh, so interesting. You're clearly from, you know, a different persuasion of Hasidim, and here you are, you're at the Ohel, and the boy is saying, Maimah. So the man says, 14 years ago, on Lag Ba Omer, I got a blessing from the Rebbe. And I, I, I shouted out my name and my wife's name. We didn't have children for many, many years. He said, the Rebbe said, oh man, and the Rebbe said, I'll need to have a brother. And at this moment, I would book it. All of a sudden, his memory goes on. He remembers the story. And he says to him, I was there. He says, I was there at that story. And said, the Rebbe said, a blessing. I yelled at you, he said, say, Amen. So the Abishter arranges it that he should be there at the Ohel that morning. And the man said, these are the Rebbe's children. This is his bracha. So I, I did this. I, cried. I, I told the children, they know the history, they know the story. And I wanted them to say a minor over here. And I wanted them to thank, come here to the, the Ohel, to thank the Rebbe for his bracha. But that's how they were born into this world. And this is a story, again, that emphasizes the power of like the Omer and the power of Tzadikim, the vision of Tzadikim. And I want to finish with one final little story. Tonight is my